Okay, I guess we're going. So, um, let's do the Savage Chickens cartoon in here because it's funny. Let's talk about some confidence intervals. What is a confidence interval? It is just the middle part of a sampling distribution. That's one way to look at it, mathematically speaking. It's also, much more importantly for us, a measure of how precise our method of estimating some point in the population is, usually a mean. We're usually trying to use our sample mean and say how good an estimate of the population mean is this. Our sample mean is automatically an estimate of the population mean. We want to know how good an estimate that is. It's also just a reverse z-score problem. You give an area, actually two areas, or an area in the middle of a distribution, and we say, what are the raw scores that cut off that middle area? So we just find the middle 95%. It's not always a 95% confidence interval, but it's, that's the most common one. So we just find the, the points in raw score units on the number line that divide the middle 95% of the distribution from the rest. But in a sampling distribution of the means, always. This is the important thing to remember. Confidence intervals always happen in a sampling distribution of means. Always. Now for now we can estimate that middle 95% with the 68, 95, 99, 7 rule because 95% more or less, uh, pretty close to 95% of the, of the observations or the area in any distribution is located between the points two standard deviations below the mean and two standard deviations above as long as that distribution is normal. Now do you remember what we talked about earlier, what I said about sampling distributions of the means, they are always more normal than their original distributions. And we love them for that because the more normal they are, the more we can have confidence that using z-scores in the normal table to estimate areas makes sense. So we can use confidence intervals even with distributions that are not terribly normal to start with as long as we have a decent sample size which will make the, the sampling distribution of the mean much more normal. All right, so let's start with the GRE scores business. This is a bit of a review. Raw scores GRE have, um, um, well, they used to, have a mean of 500 and a standard deviation of 100. The sampling distribution of means for n equals 4 has a standard deviation of 50, in other words, a standard error of the mean of 50. And so it's much skinnier. It's noticeably skinnier. It's a, the standard deviation is half the size of the standard deviation of the raw distribution, the raw score distribution. So the 95% confidence interval then, we could just say it's two standard deviations. So two standard deviations there, so 400 to 600. A standard deviation is 50, so two of them down is 400, and two of them up is 600. And so what we would do is we would just kind of, we do all this math, and then we kind of forget about it, and then we, we say the mean of our sample is 500, and the confidence interval is 400 to 600. So let's look at that again, but now with a, sampling si a sample size of 16. Let's say we had a sample size of 16, and that sample had a mean of 500. Our confidence interval would be two times the new standard deviation. The standard deviation, by the way, ignore this. I don't know what it is. I tried to cover it up, but mm, I'm in a hurry. Um, the sampling distribution has a standard deviation of 25 now. In other words, a standard error of 25, a standard error of the mean. So now, two standard deviations down and two standard deviations up from 500 is a smaller range. So two standard deviations down is only 50, and two standard deviations up is only 50. So now the confidence interval only covers f 100 points. It goes from 450 to 550. It's smaller now. So let's try that again with an N of 400, which is just ridiculous. So an N of 400... So the standard deviation is 100 divided by the square root of 400, which, as I now suddenly remember, is 20. So 100 divided by 20, that's 5. That's a teeny, teeny distribution. It's very skinny, low variability. So the 95% confidence interval is just starting from 500 and measuring down two standard deviations, in other words, two standard errors. By the way, this sigma SDM means exactly the same thing as sigma sub x bar. They both mean the standard deviation of this distribution, or the term we use is standard error of the mean. We could just write SEM equals 5, same thing. So this is a small, small confidence interval now. So now if we had a sample, a sample mean of 500, but it came from a sample of 400 individuals, then we would say our 95% confidence interval for that sample mean is 490 to 510. Now it's much smaller. Now it's a range of only 20 points total. 
So much smaller. We went down from a huge range to a small range. And we did that by increasing our sample size. In other words, increased sample size gives you increased confidence in your estimate of the population parameter, which makes sense if you think about it. You've got this population. If you've got a big chunk of the population that you randomly sample, well, then the average of that big chunk is probably going to be, you're going to be more confident that that is closer to the actual average from the population, right? Whereas if you only have like a few people or a few observations, a few rocks, a few airplanes, whatever you're measuring, if you only have like five of them, you're not very confident. They could be anything. The, the average of those five could be crazy average. But if you have 5,000 of them, you're like, whoa, what are the odds that, that average would be something really weird? Not very high. Most likely the average of these 5,000 will be uh, pretty close to whatever the true average is of the population those 5,000 came from. And this is confidence intervals. This is how they work. But confidence intervals are just getting nice and precise and mathematic with mathematical with that concept. So speaking of getting precise, two standard deviations doesn't quite give you exactly 95%. You could use P norm or Q norm or the, um, the table in the back of your book and verify that actually 